everybody. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're finding joy in the small things in life while we're apart. Um, I wanted to remind you that while you're watching these videos, you can look on the Parent Weekly and also find discussion questions that you can do together after the lesson, along with different activities. Um, most of them just need a printed out worksheet or um, craft. So, um, also, we do have a remember verse that we're still doing. So this week's remember verse is found in John 17, verse 3, and it goes like this. Now, this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you've sent. So keep on studying those verses because it's good to hide God's word in our hearts. So um, John 17, verse 3. Today, if you want to follow along with us in your Bibles, um, we're going to look in the book of Luke chapter 12, verse 13 through 31, and we're going to learn about how Jesus is freedom. So we were talking earlier about how much we both love hiking. Do any of you guys love to go hiking up on the mountains, out by the beach? There's some really amazing trails here in Oregon. Um, I love to be out there, see the birds, the trees, all of God's creation. It's just so incredible. It's amazing. So one thing I do, especially if I'm going to go on an overnight backpacking trip, I bring along a compass and I bring along a map so that I can find my way so I won't get lost. And talking about that, you, there's two kinds of lost. I mean, there's different kinds of lost. One is like physically lost, like you're in the woods and you go off trail and you can't find your way back. And there's another kind of lost that's called being spiritually, spiritually lost, like when you're clouded by sin. So um, Cameron, I was wondering, what do you think it might mean to be lost because of sin? Um, I think it would mean that you, you can't find your way back to God and you're just completely lost without him. Yeah, that's exactly right, um, and it's insightful. So you guys can be thinking about that too, what it might mean in your life to be lost because of sin. So if we are lost because of sin, we're separated from God. Um, but there's good news. As I mentioned before, Jesus is freedom. He came to set us free from sin and then make a way for us to get back to our relationship from God that we might have been lost from. So he came to set us free from worry and from sin. And before we go any further, let's take a moment, pause, clear our heads, and get our hearts ready to learn about what Jesus has for us today. So if you don't mind, close your eyes to be free from distraction, and we'll go ahead and pray. Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that you want a relationship with us. And I just pray that we will learn today what you have for us in your word. We pray this in your name. Amen. Okay, so God created us to live in a perfect relationship with him. But unfortunately, that relationship was broken because of sin. Sin broke our relationship with God. So we've got... You know, when we go backpacking, we take our backpacks with us. And unfortunately, sin broke that relationship with God. It's heavy and it weighs us down. So you want to grab that one? Right now, my backpack's pretty light. It's pretty empty. But when we add sin to it, it gets a little bit heavier. That's a real rock. It's a heavy rock. It's not pumice or something nice like that. So because sin separates us from God... Each of us, we do different things to try to fix it and to make it right. And sometimes, because sin has us lost, we do the wrong things to try to make it right. Like we look to entertainment, like our toys, or we look to being distracted by traveling and like thinking that that will make things right. Or maybe we even look to a certain friend to try to just fix whatever feels wrong. Um, the truth is, though, that only Jesus can fix the relationship that was broken by sin and that our relationship with God. So he's the only one who can free us from sin because Jesus is freedom. Um, sometimes, even though uh, we have God and we're free from sin, we still try to like carry it around with us. We still hold this baggage that's heavy. And like I told you guys, this bag, it's heavy. It's still, it's got sin in there. 
Um, so there's this story in the big God story found in the Bible where Jesus is with his disciples and he's traveling with them and they met this guy who is, um, he's really worried about money. So let's take a look at this together. I'm going to invite a friend to read from Luke chapter 12, verse 13. The parable of rich fools. Someone in the crown said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide his inheritance with me. So an inheritance is something like property or money that's given to children by their parents. And um, so Jesus hears this guy who's like, tell my brother to divide the property with me. What do you think Jesus is responding? Um, how do you think he responds to this man's worry? What do you think? Um, I think he told him not to worry about um, money. For sure. And so the cool thing about Jesus is he doesn't just say, oh, don't worry. But what he does is he tells stories. So in this case, he tells a story to this man. Um, and I'm going to let you guys take a look at this video that we've got. It's a story about a man who is always worried about his possessions and all of the stuff that he owned. So take a look now. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. Then he said, I know, I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and other goods. And I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, you will die this very night. Then who will get everything you worked for? Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. It's easiest for, easy for us to think that if we have more money and more possessions, that we'll be even happier than we've ever been before. So can you hand me that stone that says money? And let's add it to our backpack now. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's getting heavy. It's not, I don't want to carry that with me on a backpacking trip. Okay, so why do you think it is? Why do you think people think they'll be happier if they have more money? Um, maybe because they can buy more stuff and that they think will make them happier. Yeah, more stuff, more happiness. It kind of sounds like it could be true. Um, and what are some what are some things that money can give us? Um, it can go give us toys and food and homes. Mm hmm. Can give us all kinds of different things. Um, maybe just like a bed, someplace nice to rest. It helps us pay for food, for our cars, lots of different things, and it can even make us feel like we're safe. Money can make us feel like we're safe, but the question is. Does money really make us safe? No. No, it doesn't. Here's a question for you guys at home, and you can answer it too. Who is the only one who can actually make us safe? God. Exactly. God is the only one who can actually make us safe. So, you see, when we believe that money can take care of us and it can keep us safe, when we believe that, we're believing a lie. And sadly, we can put our confidence in money instead of God. And that's where we should be putting our confidence. When we, ha when we do that, trusting money so much, it gets to be more important to us than God is. So let's look in um, Luke chapter 12, verses 20 through 21. But God said to him, you you fool, this is the very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things from, for his, himself, but is not rich towards God. Okay, this bag is getting really heavy. Okay, so... This story, it, the story wasn't just for the brothers. It was also for um, you and me. I'm going to set that back down. Let's read what happens next in verse 22. And I've invited another friend to read this for us today. 
Then turning to his disciples, Jesus said, That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food to eat or enough clothes to wear. Luke 12, verse 22. So, you guys, did the disciples have a lot of money to worry about or a lot of possessions to worry about, like the rich man or like those two brothers? No. No, when they decided to follow Jesus, they left everything behind. They'd given it all away to follow him, including homes. You can grab that rock. They gave, gave away their home. Oh my goodness. Ew. <laughs> it's so heavy. Okay, they didn't just give away their homes. They gave away their clothes, the clothes that they had in their closet. Okay, can you grab that one? And they even gave away, they left behind all the food in their kitchen. They didn't take anything with them. Okay, I'm going to zip this thing up if I can. It's very full and it's very heavy. So Jesus did not want his disciples to be worrying about all of these different things because they were with God. He didn't want them worrying about where they would sleep, what they would wear, or what they would eat because Jesus is freedom. He's freedom from sin. He's freedom from worry. So I want to ask you guys, what are some things that you worry about? And I'm going to set this bag full of worry and sin on the ground. Okay, what you guys could do now when you're thinking about those things that you might be worried about, remember that Jesus offers freedom from our worry. By being in relationship with Jesus, people can be free from worry. But unfortunately, even in that relationship, sometimes they still try to carry those worries around like this backpack. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna, ugh, you guys, this is genuinely this heavy. It's like really full. I'm just gonna try to wear it like that on my shoulder. All right, you guys. So by being in relationship with Jesus, you can be free from worry. Let's take a look um, in verse 24 and verse 27 to see what the Bible has to say about what Jesus can do for us. And I've invited a friend to read that to us today. Look at the ravens. They don't need to plant or harvest or put food in barns because God feeds them and you are far more valuable to him than birds. Or look at the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautiful as they are. God takes care of what the animals need. He takes care of what the plants and the flowers of the field need. If he can do that for animals and flowers, don't you think he can take care of us, his children, even more than he takes care of them? Of course, right? Yeah. So you need to know that God is both our redeemer and our Father. And just like any good Father, He gives us what we need. He gives us what we need and we can believe in Jesus because He's our salvation and He makes us free from sin and He makes us free from worry when we put our hope in Him. So because I want to put my trust in Jesus, I want to be free <laughs> from sin. I want to be free from worry. And we can choose that. We can choose to trust Jesus and choose to trust that God knows what we need because he is a good father. What we need most is freedom from sin. Not more money, not more friends, not more things or popularity or anything. Those things won't make us happy. What we need most is more of Jesus and he knows that. So he set us free and he's invited you and me to be part of the big God story, to be part of his plan for our lives. So as his people, we can choose freedom instead of sin. We can choose it instead of worry. And we can begin to live like people who worship God because of his love and because of his care for us. So I want to ask you guys this. You can take a minute, think about it. And Cameron, you can think about this too. Is there something that you're worried about today? 
If there is, we can be free from worry when we trust that God has everything that we need. And we've talked about that so much already. We can trust that God has everything we need. And Jesus is freedom. So right now, you guys at home can grab a couple of pieces of paper. On that first piece of paper, I want you to pause, especially if you're feeling really weighed down by sin or worry. Write down on that piece of paper those sins or those worries and set it aside and take a minute and talk to God about it. Okay, and as you do that, ask for that freedom that Jesus can offer you from those sins and from those worries. And then in a minute, grab another piece of paper and at this point, write down a praise you have about God, something good that he's done that shows that he loves you and shows that he cares for you because I know he does. Okay, so here's what you need to know. No matter what you're dealing with, no matter what you're going through, God cares about you and he is freedom. Jesus is freedom. So you can trust that for yourself today. So before we go, um, I want to read a verse over you guys. And this is found in Matthew chapter 6, verses 26 through 27. It goes like this. Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? You guys, our Father in Heaven loves you and He cares about you and He will always take care of you. So today, may you know that Jesus is freedom. May you trust Him and may you trust Him that He'll give you everything that you need. And may you rest in Him and be free from worry. Love you guys and praying for you and I hope you have a fantastic week and I'll see you next time. Bye. Smiling so much. <laughs>